hello. I'm actually tackling two jobs today. The first one is a wildlife hibernaculum and the second one is a wildlife log pile. But the hibernaculum is going to be buried underneath the log pile, so I've got to tackle the hibernaculum first. And if you want to watch the log pile video, you can click here. But for now, I'm going to get on with the hibernaculum. And if you've not heard the word hibernaculum before, you might be wondering what it's all about. Well, the clue is in the word hiber, hibernation. A hibernaculum is a little place where all the little creatures and the vertebrates can find in the wintertime to hibernate. And a lot of our native creatures, frogs, newts, toads, insects, woodlice, go underground to hibernate, which is why I've dug a shallow pit. Now, in terms of location, there are some important things that you need to remember. You don't want to build a hibernaculum anywhere where it floods. My garden is raised and the slope goes away from us down into the field, so this is never going to be a soggy, wet part of the garden. Even so, having said that, at the bottom of this pit, I'm going to place quite a bit of gravel. So, so in goes the gravel. And that's just to form a bed, really. But it will also provide a bit of an environment for little insects and other invertebrates. Whilst I'm down here, let me show you this. This is going to be the entrance to the hibernaculum. I want to come back to that in a moment. So, there's a bed of gravel in the bottom of the pit, which is about a foot deep. Now, on top of that gravel, I'm going to add lots of other matter. I think the ideal thing for this is broken terracotta pots because they're naturally concave shape, automatically creates crevices for the wildlife to crawl into. Let me go and get a wheelbarrow full of bits and bobs to put in the bottom of this hole. So in has gone some bricks with little holes through and that will provide the ideal environment for the little creature to crawl into. Lots of broken up terracotta pots which are concave in shape so when that sits on the ground it automatically creates another little crevice, another environment. Some logs with bark on, reasonably dry and these are ideal because wildlife likes to creep into and under the bark and I've used logs of different variety one is conifer one is cherry and they can sit nicely in there too I'm just going to shake that down a bit so it's nicely settled and that is effectively our hibernaculum I mentioned this pipe before this pipe is going to be the entrance to the hibernaculum and I've used an old piece of soil pipe it's important if you use a piece of plastic pipe and it's at an angle you must put a stick down it because it's quite slippy inside and if you put some sticks and twigs down it that will give any creatures that are inside some purchase when they want to get in and out if you were to just put a piece of plastic pipe at an angle a creature could get in but it could be too slippy for it to get out I'm leaving mine on the level and I've secured it in between some bricks and that is where it will stay so it's on a level and the creatures can get in and out of the hibernaculum which is here and I've positioned mine along this mature hedgerow and that will give the wildlife and creatures that are in there and coming from the surrounding fields the ideal routes into the hibernaculum I'm going to protect this now with a slab and the reason for that is I do want to be able to walk along here and maintain this hedge and I don't want to damage this pipe so if I set a slab on top like that that will protect the entrance to the hibernaculum let's just rotate it slightly and you can see there is the entrance here's the hibernaculum with lots of crevices and gaps for insects and creatures and under here in the corner of this slab is the entrance to the pipe and I'm given a nice slope and that's the perfect way in other creatures will find another way in around the outside and now I'm going to cover this in some roofing felt and bury it. 
So that's just an old piece of roofing felt to keep what's under there sheltered and dry in the cold winter months. And the cold winter months is when this will come into its own because I'm doing this in the springtime, which you might think is counterintuitive. Why create a space for somewhere to hibernate in the spring when everything's coming out of hibernation? Well, the way I see it is it will give it a whole year for little wildlife and creatures around the area to find it. Also, it will enable it to get bedded in and it will give time for any human smells from me to dissipate and make it much more environmentally friendly. So there's a piece of roofing felt on top of our hibernaculum. And that is going to be buried forever, never to see the light of day. But I will live in the happy knowledge that there's a lovely, sheltered, warm space underground for our native wildlife to sit. I'm just tucking the corners in there to make it a bit neater. The next thing I'm going to do is bury this and then build a log pile on top of it. And whilst I'm burying it, I'll share with you a couple of other things that you might find useful to know. I've already mentioned that they should position, be positioned in a dry area of the garden, which is not susceptible for, to flooding. You don't want all the creatures to go into there and go into hibernation and then drown. I position mine in an elevated spot. I've given some extra drainage and I know that the, the lay of the land means that any water will run off in that direction. This hibernaculum is subterranean, which means it's underground. That's important because a lot of our native creatures and wildlife go underground to hibernate. It's a safe place for them. And also it protects them from the really severe frosts because they do get some temperature from the natural ground heat of the UK. You probably just noticed that I tucked the roof and felt underneath the slab where it can't be seen because that's slightly more aesthetically pleasing and discreet. This is the earth that came from the pit. So it's really just going back where it came from. The entrance pipe underneath the slab will also provide ventilation because it's almost hermetically sealed around the edge here by the soil. And I wouldn't want all the wildlife to go in there and not have any oxygen. So it's good that I've got that soil pipe going in underneath that slab. This hibernaculum will be the ideal home to many of our native creatures of wildlife, animals, amphibians, such as toads and frogs and newts, and many of our native insects like wood lice and beetles will find their way in there and find a lovely sheltered warm spot for the winter. And that's covered in about 10 inches to a foot of lovely soil. But there's a layer of roofing felt to protect what's underneath. And I positioned the flag on top of four little corners of bricks, as you can see, and there's the entrance. But there's also other gaps and other ways in for the wildlife to find. And this will now be buried in a log pile, which I'm about to do another video on. So, hope you found that interesting. It's pretty simple and straightforward. You've essentially created an underground space with lots of crevices for little animals to hibernate in. If you have found it useful, please do like and subscribe to my channel and hit the notifications bell. This wildlife part of the garden is part of a whole scheme. I'm doing a wildlife pond, a wildlife bog, hibernaculum, log pile. I'm doing a wildflower meadow. So please do join me on this journey and hopefully I'll see you soon.